your survival badge in Cub Scouts by eating what? Ladybugs. Ladybugs. I had to. I don't think you were in the Cub Scouts. I think you were on Fear Factor. <laughs> I, uh... OK, let's get started. I've got some very smart fifth graders Hi. that are going to help you along the way. This. Let's hey. meet them now. Mason! Yeah. Let's pick your first classmate. I want to go with Lauren. Woo! Lauren, come on up here. Woo! Let's do it. Hey. hey! Lauren, you got picked first. Yeah! I love woo! that. You're usually in the back back there. Yeah, Nobody can see you. Pick so. me. Yeah. But yeah, first. This first. time. First, first, first time. is a big thing. Yeah! Woo! All right, let's get started. Adolfo, let me tell you how the game works. Okay. I'm going to show you 10 subjects. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. You can answer them in any order you like. Your first correct answer is worth $1,000. Your 10th correct answer is worth $500,000. You ace this test. I'm going to give you a chance to prove you really are smarter than a fifth grader. Okay. I'll give you one sixth grade question that is worth $1 million. I'd love to see that question. I would love to see it, too. You ready to play? I am ready to play. Let's find out. Is Adolfo Brittis smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> All right, Adolfo, where would you like to begin? Music. Music. Which one? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with first grade life science. First grade life science is I like it. It's worth $1,000. Here's the question. What is the name of the sugary liquid that carries nutrients throughout the branches of trees and is used to make maple syrup? What is the name of the sugary liquid that carries nutrients throughout the branches of trees and is used to make maple syrup? Lauren's locked in her answer. What are you thinking, Adolfo? I'm thinking of sap. That's what's coming to mind. OK. Yeah, I'm going to lock it in, sap. Lock it in, sap. If you get this wrong, you're going to be a sap. <laughs> Take a look at the board. The correct answer is sap. Of course it is. $1,000. There's a good start. Let's keep going, Adolfo. Let's double that right now. Nine subjects remain. Which one would you like next? Kramer. with second grade grammar. Yeah. Second grade grammar, OK. Yeah. Question is worth $2,000. And the question is this. What part of speech is the word upload? A, a verb, B, an adverb, or C, a pronoun? Upload, verb, adverb, or pronoun? All right, Lauren's locked in her answer. Uh, well, when I upload things on my computer, uh, upload would be a verb, so I'm going to lock in a verb. Okay. If upload is not a verb, you might be up a creek. You said verb? I said verb, a verb. Lauren said verb. The correct answer right. is, in fact, verb. <laughs> Nice quick two thousand. Yeah. Now they can only help you for two questions at a time. Okay. Lauren, head Bye, over Lauren. to Thanks the desk. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice job, Lauren. Adolfo, pick another classmate. 
I couldn't help but miss Dean's man in the back. Let's get Dean. Come on, Dean. Let's do this, buddy. Yeah. Hello, Dean. Hi. We're off to a good start in this game. Yes. Let's look at your fifth grader profile page. D is an art medal winner and shiny star reader. What is I got some BFFs? Well, um, I have a lot of best friends. I also had another best friend in that picture being a crop him out because. <laughs> what? Wait, um, wait, you had to crop a best friend out? Yeah, um, he moved to Africa. And all he said was YOLO. I was like, what? <laughs> and he just flew out to Africa. He was like, YOLO. I was like, oh, okay. But if, I hope I never moved to Africa and you'd be cropping me out of pictures too. So, all right, well, let's keep this thing going. We're off to a good start. I want you to turn that 2,000 into 5,000 real quick I'm here, with you okay? On that, yeah, you like that? Eight subjects remaining. Which one do you like, D? Music. He likes music. I'm going to go with my colleague here and I'm going to go with first grade music. First grade music it is. First grade music question for $5,000 is is in the song she'll be coming round the mountain how many white horses will she be driving when she comes in the song she'll be coming round the mountain how many white horses will she be driving when she comes all right d's locked in his answer um i'm, I'm feeling like it's six white horses but i'm not super positive and i'm hoping if I'm not right, that my little buddy here is gonna help me out. Um, so I'm gonna lock in six white horses and hope the best. So if you're right, we can turn six into 5,000. Like Take a that. look at the board. The correct answer is, in fact, six. We're going to be playing for $10,000 and a great school giveaway right after this. Yeah. What a good start, man. How's it going? Welcome back to the all new Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Adolfo Brennis, has got $5,000. Right now, we're going to try to turn that into $10,000. Right. Not just $10,000 for you, but tonight on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? We've done something to kind of honor the staff and students of elementary schools around the country. We have something we call the Great School Giveaway. Love that. Love that. So, let me tell you about tonight's school. This school was named a national Title I distinguished school for their work in closing the achievement gap. Let's welcome fifth grade teacher Dolores and some of her students from Turner Elementary in Turner, Oregon. <laughs> Miss Dolores, how are you? We're good, we're great. <laughs> welcome to our show. Now, please explain for everybody what it means to be closing the achievement gap. Closing the achievement gap is a really great thing because what it means is that we sat down and we looked at where we were a couple years back and realized we weren't quite getting there. And so we got together, we figured out what do we need to do to get our kids up to where they needed to be. When we did that, we pulled them forward and they brought some phenomenal test scores for our school. Those kids worked really hard. That is hard. so awesome. And one of your kids, Jonathan, you built a rocket, Jonathan? Yes, I did. Oh, that is so cool. What a great school. Now, what would $10,000 mean to your school? Oh, it would do a lot. So we would be much. able to do all this stuff again and even greater. We could bring all that love of learning right back into the classroom. They want to come back. They love this school. All right, well, pay attention. We're going to try to do this for you right now. Yeah, yeah. All right, Adolfo. All right, let's do it. That's a good thing. That's a great uh, I would thing. love to be able to give them $10,000. Yeah, let's do it. All right, take a look at the board. Here's your subjects. Which one would you like next? Let's do a geography. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, second grade geography. Second grade geography. I like the way you're thinking. This question's worth $10,000 for you and the kids at Turner Elementary. Sure. Here it is. Which of the following cities are closest in distance? Boston, Massachusetts, and San Diego, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Baltimore, Maryland, 
are Austin, Texas and Minneapolis, Minnesota, which of the following cities are closest in distance. Boston and San Diego, Las Vegas and Baltimore, or Austin and Minneapolis. All right, Dee's locked in his answer. What you thinking? Uh, Boston and San Diego are on total opposite sides of the country, coast to coast. Las Vegas and Baltimore are a bit more inland, so I'm, that's better. And then we have Texas and Minneapolis, which are basically almost north and south from each other. Um, kind of going between B and C, but I'm feeling like C might be the right answer. So I'm gonna lock in C, Austin, Texas, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. All right, let's see what our fifth grader said. Take a look at Mason's desk. Mason said, Austin and Minnesota. I like the way you think, Mason. Angela said, B, oh. Vegas and Baltimore. Lauren said C, Austin and Minneapolis. Trey said B, oh. two C's and two B's. Looks like my old report card. <laughs> you were torn between those two. I was. And we have some smart fifth graders. We do. He looks a little nervous. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, the class is torn. Get this right. $10,000 for you, $10,000 for our new friends in Turner Elementary, if the answer is C. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is... Congratulations, and thank you for the great work you're doing with those kids up there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on the show. There it is. It's exactly the way you would think. Just how it looked in my head. Yeah. Exactly. All right. D, you need to go back to the classroom. Uh, thank you, D. You need to pick another thank classmate you, real quick. Good job, D. Who would you like? I think I need to pick Angela before she has a heart attack. Angela, come on up here. Yeah. Let's look at Angela's fifth grader profile page. Angela's favorite subjects are math and science, and Angela is an honor student. I'm too tired to pedal. Well, why'd you post that? Well, I posted that because when my mom asked me to walk my dog, which his name is Bentley, Yeah. this is my style of how I walk my dog. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my That was a cool video. I know. <laughs> All right. We've got ten thousand. Next question is big as well. It's the twenty-five thousand oh, dollar question. We need this. You get it. You leave here with no less than twenty-five thousand dollars. Like you that. ready? I like that. Let's take a look at the board. Here's your son. I love it. Let's do animal science. Animal science. Third grade animal, animal, animal science. Twenty-five thousand dollars is on the line. Here's your question. An entomologist primarily studies what? A, birds, B, fish, or C, insects? An entomologist primarily studies what? Birds, fish, or insects? Angela has locked in her answer. <sighs> I don't know why, but the birds thing is kind of jumping out at me, but insects also make sense too. But uh, I'm not super positive on that, so. Well, you still have three cheats. You, you I have do. your peak, which means you can look at your classmates' paper, see if you like their answer. You have your copy, which means your classmate at the podium will consult with the other classmates, come back and give the answer they like the best. Or you have your save, meaning you could guess if you think you have an answer, yeah. and if you're wrong and they're right, they save you. Well, no, I'm gonna go with my gut, which is telling me birds, and if not, a deer. Hope you help me out. <sighs> I'm gonna go with birds, A, locking in. Locking in birds. 
kind of interesting to me because when you said I'm going to go with my gut, I'm thinking back to your Cub Scout days <laughs> when you had to eat the ladybugs. Yeah. Ladybugs are what? Insects. Insects. Let's see what the correct answer is. An entomologist primarily studies insects. Uh, An ornithologist studies birds. Uh, I knew it was something just... Here's where we're at, and I told you we need this next we question. Do. So, the grown man from New York City is basing the whole ride on a fifth grader. If she said C, insects, you've got 25,000 and we continue playing. I like that. If she did not say C, you have zero dollars and you're on your way home. Take a look at the board. Angela said, come through. How's Me that feel? Too. No matter what happens the rest of the game, you're leaving here with $25,000. All right. Next question is kind of a freebie. Okay. Because you got $25,000. If you miss the next question, you still have $25,000, right? I'll take it, yeah. No need not to answer the next question, okay. right? Yeah, no need to drop out of school. All right. Adolfo, it's time to pick your next subject. Okay. Fourth grade reading. Fourth grade reading. Fourth grade okay. Reading. Sounds good. All right. The $50,000 question is going to be revealed right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. Our contestant, Adolfo Brennis, has got $25,000. All right, the fourth grade reading question worth $50,000 is this. In Washington Irving's story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, is Ichabod Crane the protagonist or antagonist? In Washington Irving's story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, is Ichabod Crane the protagonist or antagonist? Angela has locked in her answer. Uh. Have you read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow? Um, a long time ago. Okay. Uh, and I know Ichabod Crane was in it, but I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering whether or not Ichabod Crane was the protagonist or the antagonist. Well, it's a 50-50 question, really, if you think about it, right? Yes. yes. And as with all my questions, I definitely suggest thinking. <laughs> um, but uh, I've already used up my save. Okay. So I'm a little... A little concerned right now. All right. Um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna use my copy. All right. So a copy means that she will go over, confer with her classmates, come back, write down the answer she likes best. But you must take that answer. I'm gonna go for that. I'm gonna trust my kids. You don't trust your kids? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna lock it in. All right. Come on, Angela. All right, Lauren, what do you think? I think it's an uh, antagonist, but I'm, I'm not 100%. You think antagonist. Well, the first thing we need to know, what do protagonist and antagonist mean? I've read the book, and Ichabod Crane is the good guy. Yeah, so I know that, but I, I put wasn't protagonist. I put protagonist, too. OK, um, Well, I watch the TV show on Fox. Oh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, it's a really good show, by the way. You should watch it. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Ichabod Crane was the protagonist because I think everyone forgot about the Headless Horseman. True. Yes. Yeah, he is the He's the antagonist. antagonist. Yeah. He's the bad guy. The bad guy. So I'll put yeah. protagonist. All right. Okay. All right. Do you have any other questions for anybody? I think I got an answer. 
Okay, I've got one question before we leave. How much wood would woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck? Never mind, that's a different thing. Let's go. Come on. All right. You heard all the discussion, but so you write down the answer that you like the best, okay? All right, Angela's locked in her answer. Your fate is already sealed. Okay. During the classroom discussion, Trace said it's important to know what a protagonist and an antagonist are. Do you know that? Um, well. <laughs> it's really a simple yes or no answer, Adolfo. I, I think I do. The protagonist is the person who carries forth the story, and the antagonist is almost like the person who uh, antagonizes the situation. Almost the, the, the negative force there that almost go. helps got, the protagonist you, you go forward. I do know this. Okay. All right. So, here's where we stand. You've got 25,000. Yes. Even if she's wrong, you still have 25,000. If she's right, you just doubled that and you have $50,000. Yeah. Oh. If you had had to guess without the help of a classmate, what would you have said? I would have said protagonist, but I wasn't totally sure. Okay, take a look at the board. The correct answer is protagonist. You didn't really trust your gut, you put it all on the shoulders of this little fifth grader. If she said protagonist, you have $50,000 and we continue playing. If she said antagonist, you have $25,000 and we must say goodbye. Take a look at the board. Angela said... the dollar value climbs, Adolfo might need a calculator to keep track of it all. That's nine. Lock it in. But he's facing his toughest question yet. You know, a lot of people study before the test. And he'll be putting it all in the hands of his classmate. I didn't have you figured for a gambler, man. I know. Next. and Adolfo Brennis has got $50,000. We are about to try to turn that into $100,000, but they can only help you two questions at a time. Angela, return to your desk. Adolfo, you need to pick another classmate. Trace, Trace, come on up here. We got it! Let's do it! Woo! That was pretty impressive, you guys talking that out. I love yeah. these kids. All right. Remember, you can see the question and still walk away with your $50,000. Okay. Because if you miss it, you're going to drop down to $25,000. let us turn that $50,000 into $100,000. Choose your next category. Okay. Math. 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 Third grade math. Third Let's grade math. It is. All right. Let's take a look. The third grade math question worth $100,000 is this. Angela brings three dozen donuts to class. Mr. Foxworthy, Dee, and Lauren have three donuts each. How many donuts are left? Angela brings three dozen donuts to class. Mr. Foxworthy, Dee, and Lauren have three donuts each. How many donuts are left? Trace is locked in his answer. Well, let's see. Angela brings three dozen donuts. It's 36. Foxworthy, D, and Lauren each have three. three each. That's nine. So 36 minus nine is 27. 27 donuts are left. Lock it in. Here's my thought. OK. Angela brings three dozen donuts to class. I'm thinking maybe a police officer stops by for career day. <laughs> if it is 27 and you have $100,000, you should buy donuts for everybody in the audience. <laughs> donuts for everybody. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is... 27! <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! 
This is getting serious now. So serious. I love it. Take a look at this board. Wow. The next question is worth $175,000. I want you to win it. Three subjects remain. What would you like? History. U.S. history. All right. Fifth grade U.S. history. Fifth grade U.S. history. Whew. Here we go. The question worth $175,000 is this. The Rough Riders was the name given to the first United States Volunteer Cavalry whose members included what future U.S. president? The Rough Riders was the name given to the first United States Volunteer Cavalry whose members included what future U.S. president? Trace has locked in his answer. I like Trace's confidence, I do. And right now I feel like I'm rough riding because I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so, I think I'm gonna take advantage of my, my peak, and uh, I would love to see what Trace has to say about our cavalry. Okay, and let me explain this. Yes. Once you lock in a peak, you must answer the question. You I'll can see. drop out right now with $100,000, but once you lock in the peak, we must play it out. I just want you to understand, I don't want you to give away $75,000 without realizing it. No, I have to say this. I want it to go all the way. Uh, $100,000 is a lot of money to me, so. I think it's a lot of money to anybody. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, just the thought of dropping down to 25, you know, I mean, 25 is great too, but 100,000 is a lot better. Yeah. And, uh, Although 175 is even better than I know, that. I know, I know, It's a difficult choice and a big one, but we need a decision. Okay, you know, Jeff, I'm here only once. I'm gonna take my peak and I'm gonna go with Trace. you figured for a gambler, man. I know. I'm a rough rider. What can I say? You're start? a rough rider. That sounds like that ought to be some kind of rash powder to me. Rough <laughs> rider. It's, uh... All right. You wanted to peek. Take a look at the board over there. Our fifth grader, Trey, said he thinks the answer is... Teddy Roosevelt. I guess we're going with Teddy Roosevelt. Let's lock it in. Lock that in so fast. I didn't have a choice. What to do? You had no other idea. <laughs> Let's go. You didn't even know what a Rough Rider was. I will after this. You know, a lot of people study before the test uh, instead of after it. All right. The correct answer is going to be revealed when we come back. <laughs> Contestant Adolfo Brenes has got $100,000. Right now, we're trying to turn that into $175,000. Here's where we stand. Boy, you talk about a swing. There is a $150,000 swing here. If this fifth grader is right, you've got $175,000. If he's wrong, you have $25,000. Here's what's making me nervous. Oh. There's two Roosevelts. Oh. Teddy and Franklin. I will tell you this. It is either Teddy or Franklin Roosevelt. Ooh. It's not Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> Jeff, you're making me nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is actually... You are the man! Yeah. Woo! 
my gosh. That oh, is the good news. That's great news. The bad news is we are now out of cheats. You must return to the classroom. Thank Trace. you, man. Thanks, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you, Trace. thank you. Thank you. <gasps> that is so fun. fun. Oh. Gotta say, we picked some good kids today. I love my fifth graders. Woo! Oh, my God. <laughs> no more help. Okay. We're out of cheats. Okay. Two subjects remain. Remember, you can see the question yes. and drop out, in this case, with $175,000. Oh. Two subjects remain. Which one would you like? Okay. Fourth grade social studies. Fourth grade social studies. Here is the social studies question, which is worth $300,000. The Secretary of Education is a member of the cabinet, which is part of what branch of the U.S. government? The Secretary of Education is a member of the cabinet, which is part of what branch of the U.S. government? And for the first time tonight, you are up here without the help of a kid. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Oh. What do we know about the branches of the government? Um, there's a few of them. <laughs> and... Well, my confidence level just <laughs> soared. <laughs> okay, so the Secretary of Education, branch of the U.S. government. Oh, boy. <sighs> you know, Jeff, I... I would love to know this answer, but uh, at $175,000, there's just no way I could take a $150,000 drop. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. These kids are so super awesome. And uh, I think I'm just gonna walk away. Drop out of school. Don't do what I'm doing, but I'm gonna drop out of school. I'm locking it in. Locking Sorry. it in. I'll show you the answer, just so you don't spend the rest of your life wondering this. Okay, thank you. My fifth graders are so awesome, though. Lauren, what do you think it is? I think it's executive. Lauren is exactly right. It is the executive branch. There we go. But you've got $175,000. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. One last piece of business before you take it and run, though. My name is Adolfo Brennis, and I may be the best real estate agent in New York City, but I am not smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> no, go away. We'll be right back right after this. Congratulations. That's awesome. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Kids, you ready to meet your new classmate? She is a 30-year-old paleontologist from John Marshall Elementary. Please welcome Ashley Hall. Ashley, how are you? Welcome to the show. Oh, my God. Look at you. It's a little bit of the Jan Brady kind of look going on there, isn't it? That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. were you a good student then? Yes. Were you? Straight A's. Straight A's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not surprised because you're a paleontologist. That's what right, a, yeah. Do, when you have to write occupation, do people go, really? Yeah. It's an unusual job. I dig job. up dinosaurs, yeah. Yeah, exactly. you, she digs up they dinosaurs, like dinosaurs right? for a living. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know paleontology is an impressive job, but probably not a lot of days you get to make a million dollars doing no, that. No, this is one of I'm so excited. Yeah, this this so is excited. one of them because you can leave here today with a million dollars and you get to cheat off of some very smart fifth graders. Thanks for me out. Ashley, pick okay. your first classmate. Yeah, I'm gonna go. First, uh, let me look. They're all smart. I know. Just pick one I'm of them. I'm gonna go with D. D, come on up here. Yeah. 
Ashley, I'm watching you pick a classmate, and I'm thinking, I never want to go to a shoe store with her. So, uh... <laughs> Dee, how are you? I'm awesome. I'm, you are awesome. Great kid. Look at his profile and all your little updates. What is, I'm feeling Japanese? Uh, I'm, like, obsessed with Japan. I am going to go, uh, I just... Did you draw that? Yeah. Really? You're good. Uh, thank you. <laughs> It only took like five minutes. I was watching TV. Wow. Well, that's really, really cool. All right, today we got to help Miss Ashley yeah, win some money. You ready? Yes. All right, world, All right. let's find out. Is Ashley Hall smarter than a fifth grader? All right, Ashley, okay. 10 subjects up there. Where would you like to start? Okay. We're gonna go first grade grammar. First grade grammar it is. All right. Question is worth a thousand dollars. Here it is, okay. Ashley. How many letters in the following sentence should be capitalized? On her birthday, Angela went hiking with Lauren and her dog Spike. How many letters in the following sentence should be capitalized? On her birthday, Angela went hiking with Lauren and her dog Spike. D has locked in his answer. Okay, well, I know that names should be capitalized. So, Angela, I know that Lauren is another one. So how many letters in the following sentence should be capitalized? On her birthday, Angela went hiking with Lauren and her dog, Spike. Jeff, I am gonna go with three and I'm gonna lock it in. Okay. You're correct. Names should be capitalized. Okay. Angela, Lauren, and Spike. When you write a sentence, the first word in that sentence I, what was that noise? Mm. Mm, that had a little dinosaur sound to it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I got a little bone to pick with you. Uh, the first letter in a sentence oh is God. always Dad. capitalized. How many letters in the following sentence should be capitalized? The correct answer is four. Let's see what Lauren said. Hiding back there in the back of the class. Lauren said four. Let's see what Mason said. Four. Good job, Mason. Good job, Lauren. So here's how your cheats work. You have a save up there. If D said four, you have $1,000 and we keep rolling. If he said anything else, you are going home early. It's like getting to school and having a stomach ache and going straight to the office and you gotta go home. Take a look at this board. Your fifth grade classmate said, You made the same mistake, I didn't you? Well, uh, she's a paleontologist. Uh, she's got a college degree, and she did the same thing you did. So don't beat yourself up about that. Ashley, I am so sorry. Oh, oh a first grade question. Uh, and here's the worst part. Before you leave, there's one last thing you need to do. My name is Ashley Hall. I may dig up dinosaurs and have the coolest job in the world, but I am not smarter than even a first grader. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, I'm so sorry.
Jeff Foxworthy, and welcome to the show that gives grown-ups a chance to win $1 million if they can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. It's still just that easy. And get ready for a whole new fifth grader experience, beginning with a brand new classmate. Here's a 45-year-old physician who attended Forest Elementary School. Please welcome Jason Bradley. That kid grew up to be a doctor? <laughs> Stranger things have happened, I oh suppose. Oh, my but yes. goodness. Look at that. <laughs> For Halloween, all you needed was a red nose, man. <laughs> what, what was your nickname then? You had to have a nickname. I had a nickname. My nickname was Broccoli. Uh, why Broccoli? Well, I mean, the Afro. Oh, and it's kind of like I had a Broccoli, is, yes, I guess. Yes, exactly, yeah. yes. <laughs> I was going to guess Garfunkel, but I would have been off. That, so, that would have uh, been good, too. <laughs> <laughs> could you use a million bucks? I could use some money, absolutely. I have a million bucks. I, I would love it. to give it to you. Absolutely. Here's what I want you to do as we work towards that goal. I have five really smart fifth graders. Let's meet them now. One of them. Let's get underway. I'm gonna go with D. D, come on up here. Come on, D. So, how's the fifth grade treating you? Awesome. Great friends? Yes. Let me tell you guys something about this because you probably don't realize it at this age. You can make friends in the fifth grade that will be your friends for the rest of your life. Let me show you a picture on the board. That is me in the fifth grade. I think it's the last known photo of me without a mustache. That's me on the left. The guy behind me is in the audience right now, Larry Burns. Still, all these years later, one of my best friends on the planet. So great to have you here, buddy. Larry, do you have any embarrassing stories about Mr. Foxworthy? No, we... Oh, wait. we don't know. No, no, we don't <laughs> want to know any embarrassing stories about Mr. Brown. <laughs> you need to keep your mouth zipped the entire show, okay? <laughs> that guy's been getting me in trouble for 40 years. All right. You ready to get started? I'm ready to Let get Let me tell on. you how it works. I'm going to give you 10 subjects. They range from the first grade through the fifth grade. You can answer them in any order you like. Your first correct answer is worth $1,000. Your 10th correct answer is worth $500,000. And if you're a doctor, I imagine you've aced a few tests. You aced this one. I will give you a chance to prove you're actually smarter than a fifth grader. I've got one sixth grade question, which is worth $1 million. Ready? I'm ready. All right, world, let's find out. Is Dr. Jason Berkeley smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> 10 seconds. What would you like first, Jason? Uh, let's start small. Uh, I think I'm going to go with animal science first. Animal yeah. science, sure. Why not? All right. For $1,000, the first grade animal science question is, which of the following is the term for a baby koala? A, Johnny, B, Jimmy, C, Joey. You're not trying to hit the button, you're trying to make applesauce. <laughs> Which of the following is the term for a baby koala? Johnny, Jimmy, or Joey? Baby koala. So, uh, I know they live in Australia. They eat eucalyptus. Um, do they really? I believe they do. I bet they have great breath. They, I think they yeah. do too, yeah. Good for dating. <laughs> well, take your word for it. I, I haven't made out with a koala lately. Uh, I don't see it being Johnny. I don't see it being Jimmy. I'm gonna go with C, Joey. Lock it in. Lock it in, Joey. When you said C, Joey, I'm thinking like, yeah, let's see Joey for another <laughs> slice of pizza, right? And he intimidated me getting it so quick. My just goodness, over. man. You flatten the apple. <laughs> I'll tell you this, he's got the right answer. That's why he locked it in so quick. Take a look at the board. For $1,000, that's 
The correct answer is... Joey Got the first one out of the way. Nothing to it. All right, let's double that. Nine subjects remain. What would you like next? I think he said grammar. Oh, uh, we go with second grade grammar. Second grade grammar, okay. The question worth $2,000 is this. What is the pronoun in this sentence? D got a dog because he doesn't like cats. What is the pronoun in this sentence? D got a dog because he doesn't like cats. D's locked in his answer. Well, a pronoun usually refers to a person, which, D could be a personal pronoun. I thought a pronoun was a noun that's getting paid. <laughs> but I believe the pronoun in this sentence is going to be he. I think that might be, because it's not dog, it's not cats. I'm going to lock it in with he. going to lock in he. <laughs> D. He. Is correct. You got two thousand dollars in this week. Yeah! All right, all right. Way to go! All right, your classmates can only help you for two questions at a time. Dee needs to return to the classroom. Thanks, Dee. Appreciate you it. You need to pick another classmate, Doctor. Um, we'll go with Angela. Angela, come on up here. Did you know the last one? Yes. Yes, of course you did. <laughs> right. This is Angela's profile page. Look at some of her latest updates there. Her favorite subjects are math and science, and she received high honors. What is May the Angela be with you? Well, yeah, for Halloween, I dressed up as Darth Vader. Oh, wow. Because I like um, Star Wars a lot. Mm hmm And I've been practicing the force, and I think I could do it on you. You can do the force on me? All right. <laughs> it worked. And physically, you resemble Darth Vader so much. Uh, <laughs> you're barely taller than Yoda. All right, eight subjects remain. Which one would you like next? Let's go with first grade world geography. First grade world geography, okay. For $5,000, here's the world geography question. What city is the capital of Mexico? What city is the capital of Mexico? All right, Angela's locked in her answer. What are you thinking, doctor? Uh, I'm thinking it's probably Mexico City. So I'm gonna probably right now lock in Mexico City. I will say, these questions are easier to answer in my living room, in yes, my boxes, and my wife asking me this. Right, just, yeah. yeah, sitting on so. your couch in your underwear, there's nothing to it. No, it's, it's just, Get you know. up here in the lights and people start yelling, it's a different story. <laughs> my fifth graders right. are five for five in their answer, and every one of them is correct. For $5,000, the capital of Mexico is Mexico City, you got it! Way to go! All right, we're gonna try to turn 5,000 into 10,000. When we come back, go, go away. Coming up, the doctor and his class have found their rhythm. Oh. Yes. But when it comes to a screeching halt, can this physician heal thyself? Got a doctor with no money. Find out next. Welcome back. Our contestant, Dr. Jason Berkeley's got $5,000. We're trying to turn that into 10,000 now. Got your lovely wife in the audience. You gotta be happy with this so far, huh? Going well. 
By the way, you married way over your head. Oh, I you know. know. Trust that, me. Don't you? I know. I, I don't know what I did to deserve yeah. that. Trust uh, me. You're a brave man leaving her over there with Larry. He is a lot smoother than he looks. Heck, a toad is a lot smoother than he looks. You need to give her an eye test. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm just kidding. I married over my head, too. We all do, most of us. Yes. <laughs> all right. You ready? I'm ready. Seven subjects remain. What would you like? I'm going to go with second grade astronomy. Second grade astronomy. OK. This second grade question is worth $10,000. Here it is. True or false? A new moon occurs when the Earth is between the moon and the sun. True or false? A new moon occurs when the Earth is between the moon and the sun. All right, Angela has locked her answer in. And when we were in the fifth grade, my buddy Larry showed everybody a new moon out the window of the bus. <laughs> and he got to visit the principal's office. So, uh, and please, no repeat performances today, OK? That's, uh, true or false? Love those, because it's a 50-50 question. I think that we do in the Earth between the moon and the sun, it's actually referring more to a lunar eclipse. So I'm going to say that that's not what it's describing. And I'm going to say that's false. OK? You said it was false. If it's false, you got $10,000. If it's not, got a doctor with no money. <laughs> Take a look at the board. Actually, the correct answer is false. You got ten thousand You were a little bit nervous on that one. You did it to me. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good job, Angela. You need to go back to your desk. Thanks, Angela. You need to pick a new classmate, Doctor. Oh. I'm gonna go with Trace. Yeah. Trace, come on up. Yeah. All right, all right. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, and you, Jeff? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Where are you from, Trace? I'm from San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, yeah. Texas. I love me some Texas. It's awesome there, Jeff. What are the biggest misconceptions about Texas? Um, well, we're not like those rednecks on horses. <laughs> no. No. We are don't, just... Don't speak for everybody, all right? Uh, <laughs> you do see more cowboy boots in Texas, though. I will say yes. that. Yeah. All right. You got 10,000. This next question is big. We need the next one. Music, 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 music. I'm going to go with third grade spelling. Third grade spelling, OK. You're a good speller? I'm a pretty decent speller. Pretty good speller. I always heard doctors had bad handwriting. Oh, but, mine's terrible. But it's awful. Spelling something totally different. Yes. All right, let's get this. For $25,000, here's our third grade spelling question. Which word is misspelled in the following sentence? They're not certain whether it will rain Wednesday evening. Which word is misspelled in the following sentence? They're not certain whether it will rain Wednesday evening. Trace has locked in his answer. OK. Looking at the sentence, I believe that there is actually a homonym there, which is a word that is pronounced the same way, but it's spelled a little different. So it looks to me that actually the word weather in this context, in this sentence, is not spelled properly. So I'm going to go with the word weather, locking it in. If that's right, I'm going to throw in 20 extra bucks just for bringing up the homonym. Oh, I mean, that's like... Extra credit? That's like showing off, right? <laughs> extra credit, yeah. <laughs> extra credit. The word there is actually a homonym, too. Yes, correct. Did you think about that? It is, but in the context of the sentence, I think that's OK. OK. Let's find out. For $25,000, is it weather You bet it is. Good job. Trace had you covered as well. 
Weather should be weather. There we go. Love the $50,000 question because even if you miss it, you have $25,000, which is what you have right now, right. so there's no reason to drop out of school with the money. Right. Might as well take a shot at it. Five subjects remain. What would you like? Music, 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 music. I'm going to go with fourth grade U.S. history. All fourth right. grade U.S. history, okay. Since it's a freebie, get the little tougher one out of the way, maybe? Is that what you're thinking? All right. I, I, yeah. This question's worth $50,000. Here it is. Which of these men led the American Army to victory in the Battle of New Orleans during the War of 1812? A, Ulysses S. Grant, B, Alexander Hamilton, or C, Andrew Jackson? Which of these men led the American Army to victory in the Battle of New Orleans during the War of 1812? Ulysses S. Grant, Alexander Hamilton, or Andrew Jackson? Trace has locked in his answer. You know what would have been an easier question? What year was the War of 1812? That would have been easier. I would have appreciated that one. So Ulysses S. Grant, I believe, was much later. Uh, and I don't think he was around in 1812. Uh, Andrew Jackson, oh, God. Let me explain your cheats, okay? Yes, yes. You have three of them. You have a peak, which means you can look at your classmate's paper. If you like their answer, you can go with it. If not, you can go with something else. You have a copy where your classmate at the podium will have a little conference with the other fifth graders. Once he comes back, they will write down the answer they like the best. Or you have a save, meaning you could answer. Sure. And if you're wrong and your classmate at the podium is right, they can save you and we keep playing. Tell you what, I'm going to use one of my cheats. I'm going to go with my... Uh, with my peak. You want to peak? I want to peak. Okay, what? You want to lock that in? I'm going to lock it in. Lock it in. All right. Take a look at the board. Here's what this fifth grader said. B. He says Alexander Hamilton. I think I knew everything else about the War of 1812, except for this. <laughs> You know, a little known fact about the Battle of New Orleans is if the soldiers pulled up their shirt, they got a set of beads. Oh, really? Yeah. That's how it originated. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. What were you thinking before? Well, I'm thinking Andrew Jackson, because I think Hamilton was, a tre was our first treasurer. And I think he's on the $10 bill, and he was shot by Aaron Burr. No offense, Trace. I don't think Hamilton was, could be wrong, I don't think Hamilton was a commander in that sense. I think he was a U.S. treasurer. And I think Ulysses S. Grant was later and was in the Civil War. So I'm thinking it's got to be C. For some reason, it's just sticking in my mind. I think Andrew Jackson, but process elimination. I'm going to lock it in and go with C, Andrew Jackson. Well, I said there was no reason not to answer the question, right? Right. I mean, you had 25,000 even. In, <clears throat> if you miss it, you have 25,000. You went against your fifth grader. I know. I'm sorry about that. I will tell you this. You were right in throwing out Grant. It is either B or C. If it's C, you've got $50,000. Take a look at the board. It is C. Fifth grade and our contestant, Dr. Jason Berkeley, has got $50,000. We're in the process of trying to turn that into $100,000. That's a good day's work, $100,000. All right, you need to pick a new classmate. Two questions. Good job, Trace. Thanks, Trace. Hi, Lauren. How are you? You're tall. How tall are you? I'm 6'6". Six, six. Really? Yep. 6'6". Six, six. 
Angela, come here real quick. <laughs> I just want the two of you to stand side by side. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> You're halfway there, Angela. In the fourth grade, it says you were taller than? My teacher. Really? Yes. Were you really? That's I was, a little bit weird in the fourth grade. Yes, it was, because having to talk to your teacher face to face, it's a little weird, I'm looking, just looking up. Right. But this was a different experience. Was Angela your teacher? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's Lauren's profile page. Her favorite subjects are math, English, and science. She's won straight A honors and a citizenship award. This kid does everything. What's the video, let's get ready to tumble? Oh, one day I went to the Guinness World Record Museum, and I thought it'd be really cool to try to break a record. Sure, so, and be in the book, right? Yeah, so I went home, and I practiced my back walkovers. So let's count it. All right, let's take a look. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Whoa! 12 back walk -overs. You look like you were a little dizzy at the yeah. end of it there. So far, that's my best record. So, we just looked up the world record for backflip like that 34. I'm getting there. You are getting there, yeah, no doubt. You just okay. gotta find a long place to do that. Don't <laughs> hit the fence in the backyard, all okay. right? All right. We've got 50,000, let's double that. What the heck, all right? Absolutely. Four subjects remain, what would you like? I'm gonna go with fourth grade life sciences. Fourth grade life sciences. It is worth a cool $100,000, here it is. All living organisms can be divided into five kingdoms, which include fungi, plants, Protist, bacteria, and what other kingdom? All living organisms can be divided into five kingdoms, which include fungi, plants, protist, bacteria, and what other kingdom? All right, Lauren's locked in her answer. Okay, so obviously we're all living organisms, and I don't see anything pertaining to us up there. What do you mean? You and I are both fun guys. <laughs> so there's got to be something along the lines of either animal or mammal, but not all animals are mammals. So I think there's got to be something there to account for us in the animal kingdom. So I'm going to say animal kingdom, uh, lock it in. You still have two cheats left. You didn't even think about that, did you? Uh, it's because this gummy's got to include us. We're animals. The animal kingdom. I'm just thankful you didn't say the magic kingdom, so. Uh, no. If you had a chosen the copy, Lauren would have gone and talked to all of her classmates. That might have been a good option. It might have been. I don't know. I uh, just didn't see us on there, and somehow the animal kingdom came to mind. Oh, wow. All of them have it right. <laughs> I'm sweating like Ted Stryker in the movie Airplane right now. <laughs> Stryker, pull up. A good obscure reference, Thank doctor. You. Hats you. off to you. 80s movies are in my, right in my wheelhouse. Oh. <sighs> if it's animal, you got 100,000. If it's not animal, you drop down to 25,000 and you leave us. That is a big swing. The correct answer is... Animal! Yeah! 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 yeah. <laughs> Whoa! How about that? I love it. Yeah! Yeah! We will be playing for a hundred $175,000 when we come back. Don't go away. Good job. <laughs> Welcome back to the all new Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Dr. Jason Bolkley, has got $100,000, and we're about to play for $175,000. <laughs>
You've been a neurologist for 15 years. What made you get into that? Well, thank you. I've always been interested in how the way the brain works and the spine works and so forth. Well, and if you really want to study the brain, I can bring Larry the Cable Guy by and I can keep, <laughs> you, I can keep you busy. We can get some good information out of him, yeah. I'm sure. In fact, Larry the Audience Guy can keep you busy for a few weeks. So, uh, you're not the only successful person in your family. Tell us about your sister. No, I'm not. My sister is Elizabeth Berkeley. Wow. And yeah. she's an actress. Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. Yeah. And many other projects. Jesse! Looks like Dee's a big fan. You know who else likes Saved by the Bell? Larry. <laughs> what, now, was that weird growing up to have your sister on television like that? You know, I, I was, I'm older than my sister. Yeah. So I was already in college when she really started getting big and doing her thing. Well, take a look at this. We have a surprise for you. Hi, Jeff. Hi, class. Uh, Chase, I love you so much. It seems like yesterday that we were doing the Beach Club episodes and you were an extra on Saved by the Bell. But now it's your moment to shine. It's your spotlight. I love you so much and you're the best brother ever. So just go for it. I know you're gonna do great. That's awesome. Yeah. So, 100,000 is good. 175,000 is better. That's what the next question is worth. Remember, you can hear the question and drop out of school with the money you've won so far, which is 100,000. Sure. No sense not to see the question. Three subjects remain. What would you like? We go with fifth grade U.S. geography. Fifth grade U.S. geography. You've probably answered a lot of questions in your life. I have. Never won for $175,000. No, Here it is. No, no. Formed by the collapse of the volcano Mount Mazama, what is the deepest lake in the United States? Formed by the collapse of the volcano Mount Mazama, what is the deepest lake in the United States? Lauren's locked in her answer. What are you thinking? Okay. This is just one of those weird universal things that just happens in the universe. Which my a lot of universal things happen there. I, I know, I'm yeah. being redundant here, but my friend Howard started this group on Facebook saying, I learned this today. And everybody posts weird, interesting facts and that sort of thing. And one of my friends happened to post about a week and a half ago, what the deepest lake is. And initially, I would have thought it was one of the Great Lakes, because Lake Superior is the deepest Great Lake. But actually, it's Crater Lake in Oregon at the Crater Lake National Park. So I'm going to go with Crater Lake and lock it in. Now, you grew up in Michigan around the Great Lakes. Yes. So you know a lot about the Great Lakes. What I have found is a lot of times I read things on the internet that people say it's true, <laughs> and then it's not true. That ever cross your mind? <clears throat> your wife looks confident. <laughs> you didn't just throw up in your hands a little bit, did you? <laughs> just, just, just a little bit. Is there a doctor in the house? Well, I'll be passed out if I don't. That's a... Uh... <laughs> wow. If you do get sick, aim for Larry. You said it's Crater Lake. For $175,000, the answer is coming up when we come back. Contestant Dr. Jason Berkeley is trying to win $175,000. The question, formed by the collapse of the volcano Mount Mazama, what is the deepest lake in the United States? You said Crater Lake. If you are right, you have $175,000. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is... Crater Lake! Turn to your desk. Mason, come on up here. 
Dr. Meet Mason. How are you doing, Mason? How are you doing? Getting excited in the old classroom today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, take a look at his profile page. His favorite subjects are history and vocabulary. His hobbies are reading, baseball, sports trivia, and movies. Wait a minute, what is bacon fried rice? Bacon fried rice is the most delicious thing on earth. <laughs> you guys need to quit talking bad about bacon. Bacon's oh, I love bacon. Good. I love bacon. Yeah. I just... Bacon doesn't love us, does it? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. But we love bacon. All right, right now, you've got $175,000. <laughs> this next question is worth $300,000. Two subjects remain. I'm going to go with fifth grade mathematics. Fifth grade mathematics. The fifth grade question worth $300,000 is this. It takes seven gallons, one quart to paint your house. You have four gallons, three quarts. How much more paint do you need? It takes seven gallons, one quart to paint your house. You have four gallons, three quarts. How much more paint do you need? All right, Mason's locked in his answer. Talk it out. Okay. One of my friends taught me a very simplistic way of remembering how many quarts are in a gallon. I know there are four quarts in a gallon. And she's a teacher and she taught it to her students. She said, quart, my whole body's a gallon. Quart, 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 quart. This is a pint, 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 pint. Then there's You're a cup, doing the cup. Macarena. I'm doing the Macarena. Yeah. I'm not sure that's $300,000 worth of dancing. So, by that logic, one quart in addition, would get me to five gallons. So that's one. Two more gallons would be eight quarts. So that's nine quarts total. Because it'd be quart, 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 times two, that's nine quarts. Plus the extra quart, that's 10 quarts. Do you need the answer in quarts? It could be quarts, gallons, pints. And any, any, denomin any okay, denomination. Any denomination. Okay. I'm gonna go with 10 quarts. Is it five? Give me to five gallons. That's seven gallons. I'm gonna go with 10 quarts and lock it in. <laughs> you may be the only guy I know that buys paint by the quart. Uh, <laughs> all right. Not really that big a deal, just a hundred and $50,000 you're giving back if you're wrong. I'm about to say you either have 300,000 or you have 25,000. Which one would you rather hear? 300? 300? <laughs> Take a look at the board. For $300,000, the correct answer is Two gallons, two quarts, which is 10 quarts. Yeah. Oh my God. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the kids. You got a standing ovation here. Jason, you've got $300,000. We are one question away from the million dollar question. I want you to teach everybody that dance. We're gonna be playing for half a million dollars when we come back. Show me the dance, what is it? Yeah, court, 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 court. Pine, 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 pine. Cup, 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 cup. Only one subject stands between Dr. Jason and the million dollar question. Wouldn't it be awesome if it was a Springsteen question? But he's not feeling the beat. Music was not my main forte. I've seen you dance. Can Mason help him get into the rhythm? Mason said... Find out after this. Jason Berkeley has got 
One subject remains on our first board. All right, you, you got to explain this to me. It says you keep a bag of peanuts in your car, but not for you to eat. No, they're raw peanuts. And I have to thank my mom for this. When it comes to animals, she's a little nuts. <laughs> and so... Whose mother is it? That's well, part of their job, right? Maybe, but... And she... who made them that way? Right. We did. Right, yeah. exactly. So the peanuts are for the crows. And so crows are very smart birds. Right. And they actually recognize my car now when I drive down the street. They're all waiting and yelling to each other. So I throw the peanuts to them, a handful of peanuts here and there, and they come down and they open them up with their, with their beaks. Yeah, let, let me tell you what's going to happen 40 yes. years from now. <laughs> Is you're going to be the guy on the sidewalk and people are going to be going, you know, he used to be a doctor before right. he was the crazy crow man. <laughs> They say he was a brain doctor. That's cool. The crows yeah. are really smart. Very smart. They communicate with each yes. other, too. Yes. All right. The only thing that remains is music. You are one question away from the million dollar question. All right. Well, remember this. You can see yes. the question. You can drop out with the money you've already earned. And you have two cheats left. Don't forget that. You have right. a copy and a save. Your third grade music question is... If a musical piece is written in three quarters time, how many beats are there per measure? If a musical piece is written in three quarters time, how many beats are there per measure? Mason's locked in his answer. I've done a lot of episodes of this show. I don't think anybody's ever saved a third grade question until the end. Why did you do that? I love music. I'm a huge Springsteen fan. I play the guitar very poorly. <laughs> so I just don't know the different notes and keys as well as maybe some other people did. Wouldn't it be awesome if it was a Springsteen question? Oh. Yeah. Third grade Springsteen for half a million dollars. <laughs> what you thinking? Talk it out. Well, Jeff, I never could understand music. I remember when I was in I think it was second grade, I wanted to play the trumpet. Had no idea what I was doing. I liked playing with the spit thing that I could do, and that <laughs> was it. Looking at the question, and music was not my main forte. I've seen you dance. Yes, yeah. Uh... You still have two cheats left. You didn't even think about that, did you? Not that I don't trust the kids, because they're all wonderful, but I'm a total control freak, and at this point, I'm a control freak. What are you thinking? I think $300,000 is pretty awesome. I think I'm going to take the money and I'm going to leave. I'm going to lock that in. You're dropping out of school. I'm dropping out of school. Audrey, how do you feel about that? I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. I feel pretty good. You, you've seen him around music, huh? I have. <laughs> do you know the answer? I do not. Oh, Audrey, I wish you had, because for the rest of your life, you could have said, you know. <laughs> Take a look at this. Look at the front of their desk. D said three. Angela said three. Lauren said three. Trace said three. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is three. Three quarters time, there's three beats per measure. If you had said a million, Mason said three, and he could have saved you. But the bad news is you're only leaving here with $300,000. Well played. Congratulations, Jason. How about that? Pretty awesome. Now, since you dropped out of school, yes. one last piece of business yes. before you get the money. There's a camera right there. Let's hear it. My name is Dr. Jason Berkeley, and I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Dude, that's awesome.